So the last thing I picked was horsetail, which I'm going to dry to make teas out of. And now what I'm looking for is arnica flowers. This is heartleaf arnica. You can kind of see the whole plant there clearly. I'm not giving you an official plant IDing. If you don't know what something is, please find out from a knowledgeable person or source. But that is arnica and you may be familiar with its uses, but what I want is the flowers. So I'm going to pick some. Now there's actually a bunch growing closer to my house, but they uh, are also pretty to look at. So I'm choosing not to harvest them, but there's plenty more growing back through the woods edges here. So I'm going to pick some of these. Just like anything else, I'm not harvesting all of anything because I don't want to kill it out. So I harvested a few there. I'm going to leave those guys. There's some more through there. And let's pick a few more from this patch. yet another hillside if the camera can hear me over the roaring of the creek behind there. Um, it's covered in even more flowers. Now depending where you live something to be aware of is that in some areas like I believe in Europe uh, Arnica is actually a protected flower and there are rules about how and when and how much can be harvested because it's been over harvested and uh, so that's something to, to be aware of if you're going to use that. In this area it is not. It grows rather prolifically but I want to keep it that way. There's just more all over. There's a huge patch right there, back there, and more up there. And this is all within just a few hundred yards of my house through the woods. And there's a lot more. So, but we want to keep it that way. So when you're wild harvesting or foraging almost anything, a good, good rule of thumb is to never take more than a quarter of whatever you're harvesting. I didn't pick even close to that. I've got a pretty good uh, bucket full here if you can see of um, flowers it's not clear full of flowers because the horse tails are under there but I just try to pick you know one here and one there and two there and so on leave plenty of flowers because I want to keep my beautiful arnica blooming away in this area so that's just something to be aware of if you're wild harvesting anything be respectful of the plants and the nature we don't want to wipe it out in the area where it's growing so take a little bit and realistically, this is going to make me enough arnica salve to an oil to last me for the whole next year, which I want because it's not going to grow and bloom again for another year. But I don't need more than that. And that's plenty for me and, and to share with a friend or two. And so we're just going to leave the rest of these here blooming just as they are. And we're going to go see if we can find one more thing while we're harvesting today. I want some more mullen leaves to dry. This is a mullein leaf. This is a pretty easy plant to ID. It's a biennial, so in the second year it's going to make a flower. And we do want some flowers later in the year when they bloom for that, but it's got a big wide fuzzy leaf. And I'm going to pick this one, and part of it, and take that with us. So now that I'm inside with my uh, basket here, I get a ton of questions. People ask me about how I preserve things. What do I do with them? How do I store them? And all of those kinds of topics. So, for most, and I've done videos of drying herbs and teas and so on before with uh, mint and various herbs. This is actually some mullein leaf that's been drying in here for about a day because it was growing under a berry bush where I didn't want it, so I picked that one earlier. So that's what it looks like when it started to dry. You can see it's kind of looking shriveled up. And this is the leaves I just picked. 
And I'm just going to spread them out on this. This is actually a just a cookie cooling rack, but it works nicely to, to lift things up just a bit and let a little more airflow happen around them. So I'm just going to spread those out and they'll start to shrink almost right away. And I can actually just sit on the counter. I live in a pretty dry climate. If you live somewhere more humid, you may well need to um, either use a dehydrator, put things in your oven on low, or my favorite, if you can't just let them dry on the counter in the sun or a, a solar oven, is to um, put them in a, a hot attic like above a garage or an attic above your house if you have that. That kind of thing works really well for drying things. Um, the flowers, my arnica flowers I picked here, all these pretty yellow guys. I'm just going to spread on again. This is just a cookie sheet. Um, I just want to keep all their petals and everything as they dry. So I'm going to put them on there. And again, all the same options for how you dry things. I just have really, really dry air here, so I can simply dehydrate pretty much anything I want just by spreading it out and letting it dry like this. Now, like I said, this is going to be enough arnica to last me for at least the next year, but the blossoms are already starting to wilt since I picked them out there in the sun. So I'm just going to spread them out and let that whole pretty tray sit here and dry. And then the last one I have here, the first thing I picked is the horsetail. It's not a very juicy plant to start, at least not here. I know there are quite a few kinds of horsetail, and some of you guys probably have much um, a much bigger variety. This is about all the bigger that this, the taller and whatever this kind gets. There are some very large kinds of horsetail. They just don't grow here. Uh, most of our versions of things are smaller um, due to our short season and cold climate. But um, that is just going to sit there and it'll start to shrink almost right away. Now what you don't want to do is have any of your stuff mold while it's drying. And if you have a humid climate, if it's a humid day, you probably cannot just let things air dry on a counter like this. You're going to need some sun, you're going to need a dehydrator, you're going to need some heat, you're going to need a hot attic. Um, but this usually works really well for me. So these things are just going to sit here on the counter as they shrivel up and they shrivel quickly. You know, like I said, this, these mullein leaves were picked a, uh, a day ago and they're already half dry and if I set them out in the sun they'd probably be the whole way dry already and I might put things out in the sun for just a little bit this afternoon so that's how I dry my herbs so that's how I dry a bunch of my herbs and medicines now I'm going to do different things with these these two green leafy things once they're totally dry so they won't mold I'm actually just going to crumble up and put in a jar for steeping teas and such out of. The flowers I'm going to make an arnica oil with, and you can do it when they're fresh, but your oil's a little more prone to going rancid because of the moisture content in there. So I prefer to dry them out before I do that. So I'll show you guys how to do that here after they're dry. But right now, that's all I do when I harvest herbs and flowers to dry for making medicines or salves or teas. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.